In this short tutorial, we will review the vertical debiasing workflow for the TrueView 410 system. The same principles that we use in this workflow can be applied to any PPK or RTK GNSS process derived data set. For instance, traditional airborne laser scanning or dense image matching. Even when correctly performing GNSS processing and having a calibrated LiDAR sensor, which we're going to be, we've done with the TrueView 410 system, there can still be some bias in the data set relative to ground truth or checkpoints. So recall that the vertical component of GNSS solutions is usually the, the weakest. So we can use the control report function in TrueView Evo to ascertain the bias value, and then we can use a point cloud task to remove this vertical bias. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up uh, a TrueView Evo uh, project. This is a TrueView 410 data set. And the first thing you want to do uh, when you have a TrueView 410 data set for this workflow is add your control file. Uh, you can add it uh, either with the add data button up here. You're going to add a feature file. If it's already in shapefile format or one of the supported formats, or a lot of times our customers will have uh, their control uh, data in text or CSV format. And if that's the case, you go to File, Import from ASCII XYZ, and that way you can go through that process and import your, your uh, convert your text file to a shapefile format that we can use for this process. Uh, this process for, for uh, importing from ASCII and converting that to shapefile is covered in another one of our tutorial videos. Uh, you can find that and other tutorial videos uh, that would be useful at support.goq.com. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole slew of little uh, short uh, workflow videos for, for uh, LP360 and those would apply to TrueView, TrueView Evo as well. So, um, so once you've uh, imported your uh, control file, which I already have, you can see the little red dots on the screen in the map view. Um, we're ready to begin the process. Just keep in mind that this control file needs to be in the same spatial reference system as your TrueView data set. Um, so the next thing we want to do once we've imported this file, you can see at my table of contents, is we're going to go, go to, um, uh, we want to make sure our control points toolbar is turned on. It's this toolbar right here. This is the default location. And uh, you're going to select that shape file that you, or uh, your control file that you've imported uh, in this drop down menu. And then you'll select this button on the far right to open up the control points report dialog. Now just keep in mind we want to make sure we're using valid points for this comparison. Uh, so you want to make sure your points are on a clean level a surface or location on your on your project. So I uh, definitely don't want to have uh, control points or checkpoints in uh, grassy areas or uh, um, on slopes. Uh, definitely not next to tall buildings or vehicles. Uh, just make sure they're nice uh, open flat areas. Um, and so with that in mind, um, this is uh, this project that I'm reviewing uh, in this example. Uh, this is a site we fly all the time. So uh, I've marked uh, my uh, control points and checkpoints accordingly, and even the points uh, that uh, uh, either fall outside of my uh, project area or they're in grassy areas, I've marked accordingly as well. So the points I'm going to be using, I've marked as FC for full check. Uh, the points, if possible, with this project, uh, with this workflow, uh, once you've done your debiasing, it would be good or it's recommended uh, that you have some checkpoints, uh, some additional checkpoints uh, to uh, uh, validate the accuracy of our debiasing process and your overall data set as, uh, as it relates to those uh, checkpoints we've left behind. So uh, I've done that as well and labeled those as FK. 
um, now if if you're bringing in this uh, control file and uh, you haven't labeled all these uh, one uh, nice thing you can do I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the map view is you can click through these in the menu it's going to drive you right to them um, I can clearly see that uh, these uh, points that I've labeled FC are falling where there's uh, data points and if I scroll down to the IPs you can see I've either got points in some really bad uh, grassy areas or they're outside of my project so I've labeled them IP so I don't include those when I'm doing my work also this one at the top is labeled BS that's my base station point so obviously you don't want to use your base station point either you've got the your base station equipment on top of the point during the flight so you don't want to use that uh, uh, for this process uh, so the, the next thing I'm going to do since I've labeled my points this is uh, uh, I've labeled them as, as these types so I'm going to select my FC type my full control and it's automatically going to turn off my other points my points that I'm not going to obviously not going to use because they're outside my project area and also uh, some extra points that again that I've collected to do an accuracy uh, assessment at the end of this process okay uh, for method uh, instead of using a triangulation we want to choose inverse distance weighted okay we recommend using the inverse dis distance weighted option when running the control report function uh, because data uh, from these uh, lower quality scanners tends to be a bit noisy and just using three points uh, which is what the 10 method would do um, uh, makes for a noisy model of the surface uh, with this uh, inverse distance weighted or IDW uh, this should give you a little better estimate it's just, uh, less noisy um, a better estimate of the uh, ground elevation especially if the guideline about setting checkpoints in a clear and level spot is followed as I've already mentioned so uh, let's go ahead and do that I've changed this to one okay and now all I need to do is click uh, calculate DZ and this is going to um, calculate the uh, distance vertically uh, between the uh, control points and the um, uh, point cloud surface click OK so this is telling me uh, that these points are outside of my uh, data set and just keep in mind these are not my ID numbers over here on the left this is where they fall in the list so point 13 17 and 18 uh, as you go on down the list those are outside of my data set and you saw earlier where I marked those as IP okay okay so this is telling me if we look on the right side here the vertical section uh, we're not concerned with the horizontal section for this workflow uh, uh, my mean error is negative uh, 2.4 centimeters so the distance between that point cloud and uh, the uh, control points on average is 2.4 centimeters and we have some other statistics here as well uh, but we're mainly concerned with this because we're going to shift the point cloud based on this and so once we shifted the point cloud we assume that this is going to drop to zero uh, some of our other accuracy uh, values are going to drop as well so that's good uh, so uh, basically the average uh, uh, distance between between these the point cloud and the control control points we're gonna uh, basically uh, shift it to where those are, are a lot closer in value okay so I'm hit OK here next thing we want to do is uh, create a point cloud task I'm going to click on my point cloud task tab here and uh, we're going to go to uh, uh, we want to use the affine transform uh, LAS point cloud task if you want to add a new one you're going to click on this gear icon on the top right and then click uh, add uh, select your task type which is uh, affine transform LAS and name it whatever you would like and then uh, uh, you'll click OK you'll go through these dialogues and it'll show up in your list just like it has on mine uh, for our input uh, LAS layer, uh, we want to just use our active LAS layer that we uh, generated through the TrueView Evo processing. 
Um, just keep in mind too that for active LAS layer, uh, we have an option here. There's a button that's depressed. This is a single LAS mode. This only allows uh, one uh, LAS layer to be shown at a time. So what we're going to be doing here is generating a new LAS layer. Uh, when we do some additional processes, we want to make sure we switch to the correct LAS layer. And if we have this button depressed, we can make sure that only one LAS layer is being displayed at the time. We're not choosing our original LAS, so we won't get all confused. So uh, just keep that in mind, and you'll see that in a little bit. Uh, you'll put that uh, value in the uh, translate uh, dialog here. Uh, so you want to make sure you're going the same direction. So uh, as you saw in the control report dialog, it was negative 2.4 centimeters. So we need to put the same value here and in the same direction. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom and you just want to make sure your output is set accordingly as well. If we click maintain source file structure, it's going to uh, keep the same uh, number of files and the same naming convention. So uh, just make sure you uh, choose an appropriate spot for that output folder. Okay. So now I'm going to run this uh, by project. Now that I have my settings the way I want them. All right, so that process is complete. So I've just created a new point cloud. Shift apply. So uh, my active LAS layer setting at the top, I'm going to select that. Um, let's go to our table of contents real quick before we do that. And just so we don't get confused, we're going to change this to uh, debias. So we know that that's the, um, the, uh, the point cloud we just produced. And if you, as you see up here, when we select our active LAS layer, it's going to reflect that naming convention, OK? So what we want to do next is go back to our control uh, report dialog. Uh, we're going to select uh, the same thing. We're going to use our full control. And we're going to do calculate DZ again. And we should see that value go to 0. And we did. Um, and like I said uh, earlier, if possible, you want to set up some uh, checkpoints uh, to, to uh, validate this uh, shift that we just did and also it'll uh, serve as your accuracy assessment uh, for your um, project. So I'm going to change the quick set to uh, pull check. And um, you see it automatically calculated, but just for good measure, we'll click on calculate DZ again. And you can see I've, we're, we're a lot better um, uh, our point cloud is much closer to um, our checkpoints than in, they were to the control points before. So you can see that shift was uh, successful in getting our um, data set closer to that ground truth. And this is really important um, if you're uh, going to be flying the same project area multiple times. This is a, um, a good uh, method for making sure your, your point clouds match up from project to project. Uh, if you need any additional assistance, uh, please contact us at support at geoq.com. Um, hopefully this has been useful to you, and uh, we'll see you next time.